Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing my out of box review for the HG Zaku 1 Gundam Thunderbolt anime version. So once again, the difference between the anime version and the manga version is just going to be some very slight color changes and a couple of stickers. Uh, the sticker sheet is actually the same, the foil sticker sheet, uh, but there's going to be a couple stickers that we're going to omit in this case, so just pay attention to the manual. Uh, there is, under the parts list, there's a little thing, it's all in Japanese, but you can see there's just it says uh, a couple of sticker numbers that you're not going to use. Might as well just point it out to you here, under the parts list here you can see it says these are seals that we won't use, number 4, number 3, and number 13, so that is just showing you that. But anyway, really cool kit, really cool version of the Zaku 1, obviously this color scheme is going to be pretty unique, the yellow and orange and black and tan there for our colors. I really quite like it, it definitely has a more like construction worker kind of look to it, but with all the guns and stuff that you get with this kit, it's definitely still a fighting robot. So, gotta say a big thank you as always to Mind Phoenix Hobby Store for sending me this kit, if you guys are living in Australia. Please do check out their site and support them. Uh, let's get a look around this kit. I did use a couple of the uh, marking stickers. So aside from the photo stickers, I did use a few of the marking stickers just for the striping there on those skirts. If you'll remember correctly from the unboxing, the actual lining for those stripes is molded. So we do have some molded lines for that, so painting that will be very easy. But uh, if you aren't painting, if you do want to use these stickers, they don't look too bad. You can use those on there. Uh, all the other small little color apps that you're seeing are uh, for just foil stickers. But uh, those ones for the stripes are the decal stickers. So they have the clear back. So the clear, they're just black. And then they have the small little gray circles. And then the yellow is just the actually ye yellow plastic showing through there. So it got a lot of stickers on there, though. It wouldn't be a Thunderbolt HG kit if it didn't have a lot of stickers. So it doesn't quite have as many per se as some of the under, other Thunderbolt kits. I think this one probably, this one or the GM probably have uh, the least. And again, with this kit, you, there are a couple even that we're not going to use. But um, yeah, still overall color separation I think is still pretty good for this kit for the most part. You are going to have to do a little bit of masking. Uh, but I think if you're planning to buy and paint any of the uh, Thunderbolt kits, then you know about the masking that you're getting yourself into. So why don't we take a look at the uh, overall articulation. It's going to be pretty much similar to uh, the Zaku 2 from the line, but uh, let's see here. The Mono Eye, of course, can be rotated, and unlike the Origins kits, that Mono Eye is a molded part in there, so painting that is also going to be really easy. It's got, it's got the foil sticker there for the pink of the eye. Of course, if you pop off the head, there is the switch underneath that you can use to move the eye from left to right. You can see we even have some of this tan like cloth, the uh, detail part in there on the neck as well, which is kind of nice. The head articulation, you're going to be able to go up only about that far, not really a whole lot. Uh, down about like that, not too bad, and then everything else. Uh, stickers here on the front. The black part there is, is an actual black piece, but then these small little stickers there with the orange uh, verniers, that's one, two, three, four on the front. There's four there on the back of the torso as well. Uh, the back, this black part there on the back, those are stickers, or on the front, those are pieces. Um, then for the stomach, uh, due to the fact that this one doesn't have the power cables going around the stomach like the Zaku 2 does, this one I think does have a little bit better articulation here in the stomach. Forward and back, it's really only going to be a little bit like that, not really too much. Side to side, again, you're going to have a little bit, not really a whole lot, but just being able to turn the waist, again, not a lot, but enough. Definitely more than the Zaku 2, so that should be uh, convenient for doing some um, posing. When we turn the shoulders, you can see we have this piece that's going to cover up the polycap. So that piece is going to come out uh, along with the polycap for some nice shoulder articulation forward there. On the shoulder part, we have an orange piece and then black piece. The orange piece has a seam line there. The black piece also has a seam line. This is stickers on here, the yellow. That's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six yellow stickers actually. There's like a yellow ring and then a yellow sticker, like cap sticker that goes over the top of that. Pretty bad at those stickers, but uh, unfortunate anyway. Those should be pretty easy to mask. They just mask around the, uh, around the raised circles. And again, just this cloth detail here. This center part there doesn't have 
any uh, any seams, so that's nice. But here on the lower part, there is going to be a seam there that you'll have to get rid of carefully not to ruin that detail. Uh, seam line here on the lower arm as well, unfortunately, unlike the Zaku 2 where it doesn't have that, this one does. Uh, but the arm is going to be able to bend about that much. It's going to be able to go up uh, pretty well like that. This shoulder armor piece does move independently on the arm, so you're able to get that arm up uh, about like that. Something not too bad, and then the wrist, of course, is just on ball joints. Over on this side, we have a seam line on this part as well, but it's just a square block, so very easy to get rid of that. Uh, then this tan kind of just bar piece here that's there like that. So that's kind of a cool, cool detail that can be used. Uh, on the elbows, actually, these are stickers there. to just, And pretty much the whole point of that is just to make that black line, because the sticker color is the same orange as this. But the sticker basically just exists yeah, to make that black line there. On the back of the arm, we have a seam line there, down the back of the arm as well. It's so definitely a fair share of seams on this kit, but again, that has also been a constant theme with the Thunderbolt kits. They don't, just seemed like Bandai didn't really put a whole lot of effort into trying to uh, get rid of any of the seams for these kits. I think they put their efforts elsewhere, which, you know, is a good and bad thing, I think. The front skirts can move uh, separately. If you clip them apart, those are, are very long. Uh, then, yeah, again, some just stickers there for those small details, the stickers there. The side skirts can go up about that far before they're going to start to run into the stomach there. Not too bad. The back skirt is just fixed. And then the backpack, I guess we can just look at this. A lot of thrusters on here, but no stickers or anything. This is the uh, articulated arm. It's kind of very hard to see because it's just black. But uh, that is it, and it's a folded up form. We do also have an open form, which we'll take a look at when we check out the accessories. The legs are able to rotate at the top there, uh, and then we get a nice bend here, which is pretty good. It's really only going to get about 90 degrees, but it looks pretty good. The knee separation is there a little bit. We have a black piece there for the kind of side uh, cap there of the knees. Uh, this is like the shoulder, just yellow stickers here on the kneecaps, unfortunately, but that's just one, two stickers. Uh, then on the sides of the legs, obviously one, two, three, four, five on each side, so a total 20 of those little small stickers uh, going on both of the legs. Uh, feet are going to be able to move a little bit here, side to side, forward, pretty good. Uh, nice range there, forward, back, uh, not a whole lot, but a little bit. Underside of the feet, we've got uh, some hollow space, some detail, kind of not too bad. Better than no detail at all, I guess. Uh, and that's pretty much it for the articulation. Now let's take a look at some of the accessories and the stuff we have with this, because there's quite a lot of it. So let's take a look at uh, hand options first. You can see there on the kit, I've just got the holding hands. We do also have an option of one open hand for the left side. This is very similar to the uh, the Origins Zaku kit. Uh, looks very similar to that. Uh, the cap, of course, is different. It has like those knuckles built in on there. Uh, then for the right side, we have uh, two different, let's see, where are they? Two different trigger fingers. Uh, the hand is essentially the same, but the difference is going to be in the wrist. One is just a straight straight wrist here, and then this one is a bent wrist, so that one's going to be more convenient like for holding a Zaku rifle with the back that you need to kind of be out of the way of the arm. And we do have one more trigger finger, which is uh, another bent uh, wrist trigger finger here for the left side as well, so you will actually be able to hold some uh, trigger fingered weapons, triggered weapons in the left and right hands at the same time, so that'll be nice. Here is the uh, extended arm for the backpack. It has one point of articulation there, and that's it, so hollow, hollow on the sides of that, not really great. This Nothing else really moves at all, but again, this is just, you can use that for holding on to some weapon or something that'll just plug in onto the backpack. Take a look at that in use in a moment. We have our heat hawk, pretty standard here, nothing too special. This doesn't have any peg or anything to plug into, but what it is going to plug into is this separate piece that you have to plug onto the side skirt. So we have uh, this piece here with this little triangle molded detail that is going to fit uh, for the uh, thing like that that fits onto this piece. And this piece fits onto the side skirt. So if you want to use that, you can have that on there like so. And then we have two of these uh, cracker grenades. And you can see uh, there's a peg on each one. Just one part has a peg and then they have a couple holes. So what you can do is you can peg one into the other and then you peg this one into this piece which is going to be going on the other side skirt. So you just plug it into there. And we can go over to the side skirt I think it's supposed to be vertical like that actually. And that plugs into here. 
there we go. There is a specific orientation for that orange piece that's going to work the best, but then once you get that on there, that's what that's going to look like. So you can have those mounted onto the side skirt as well. They're going to be kind of sticking out, not really the most out of the way. Uh, then we have a couple of these parts here. These are interesting black parts here. What these are for is like some like toe clamps. Kind of what you can do is we have this piece here for the toe. You can just slide this out. It's a little bit tricky to get out. There you go. Once you take out that piece, then you just replace it with this open one. You can just plug this onto here like that. And then you can use that so like the Zaku is using these like little toe claws to like grapple onto something. So that's kind of cool. It'd be really useful for if you're making some sort of uh, Thunderbolt diorama or something. You could do some really cool stuff with that. So it's cool that that's included as just a little option part that you can use for that kind of thing. Then for weapons, we have the Zaku machine gun. Again, it's going to be the same as with the Zaku 2. So just the front handle moves, and we have some pegs for the, either the left or right side holding in the handle. Then we have the uh, Zaku Bazooka, again sticker there for the camera. Again, nothing new about this one. With the Psycho Zaku kit, we had three of these. Uh, I did actually build this one. This is not one that I stole from that kit uh, to use for this one, but it's exactly the same. Uh, it's just got the secondary handle in the front that moves up and down. The main handle moves forward and back like that. And of course the camera moves here as well. And this does also have this little hook thing here on the front like the other ones, but I actually broke this piece. Uh, accidentally. It's just this little piece here that I've now broken. Just a little bit of Tamiya extra thin cement will glue that uh, back together just fine, but I'm just going to leave that off to the side for now. This can be mounted onto the backpack. If you'll notice there's uh, these two kind of little clamp parts there on the backpack. This can just be mold, um, uh, mounted onto here by this part of the handle. There we go. Uh, definitely a really tight fit. It looks really kind of weird that it's held on at that point of the handle and not like onto like the main body of the bazooka. Uh, but that is how you are supposed to do it, apparently. On the other side is where we can mount the uh, Zaku machine gun, and that is also going to be mounted onto like, the underside of the handle. Again, like that, also strange, but uh, is just how it goes. These uh, fuel tanks there, I had that one a little bit misaligned, but then, uh, anyway, that's how that's going to look with those attached onto the backpack. But then we do also have a new weapon, the Zaku Bazooka 2. This one has a molded orange part there for the ammo, uh, pink sticker there for the camera. Again, all the articulation is the same, handle moves, this handle moves that way, camera moves side to side, but just a different design, I think a much uh, cooler design with the ammunition being on top, it's going to make it easier to hold this up over the shoulder. Um, this one has a separate piece for plugging this onto the back skirt, we're going to use this piece here. It's going to plug into, you can see a small little hole there on the bazooka, and you plug that onto there, you can plug this, the problem is you have to get up actually underneath that part of the kit so you have to kind of go under the backpack and get that onto the back skirt like that and uh, there you go there's the backpack with all that stuff loaded on there so kind of cool you can have all that stuff mounted onto the back and then again the axe uh, the heat hawk and the uh, cracker grenades which have now fallen off but those can be attached onto the side there as well so you can actually hold everything in there and still have his hands free which is kind of cool so here he is all loaded up with everything on there now, uh, properly. And you know, with all the guns and stuff that you get with the Thunderbolt kits, if you do have other versions of the Thunderbolt Zaku, the Zaku 2 or the Psycho Zaku, I'm sure you could uh, spare some of those extra guns and give this one even more if you really wanted to. But I think this one, I mean, two bazookas and a machine gun and heat hawk and grenades, I think is probably enough uh, to keep this guy going for a while. Anyway, the posability, and just uh, so far I can tell you, is really quite good. The one thing you just want to be careful with when uh, working with this is those small thrusters on the backpack are going to come off really easily. So whether you're painting or not painting, whenever you're just, whenever you're ready to just call it done with the kit, I would say definitely glue those thrusters in place just to make sure they're not going to fall off because they're quite small. And if you lose them, uh, there's a good chance that you're probably not going to find them again. So here's just a comparison with the Zaku 2 from the series. I have the Zaku 2 with the Bazooka 1 and the Zaku 1 with the Bazooka 2, interestingly. But uh, yeah, so it's going to be definitely a cool set when you start getting a few of these together because of all the similarities. I mean, they all have like the big backpacks with all the stuff you can attach onto them and they all have a very similar look with having a lot of detail. I think they're just Thunderbolt Zaku 2 though, I mean, in terms of like details and stickers on the actual kit itself, it's a lot less than uh, the Zaku 1 and Psycho Zaku especially. 
So the Zaku 2 is definitely going to have a little bit more plain look to it, but I, I, it's still my favorite of the group though. This Zaku 2, or Zaku 1 though, is still really cool, but I just, just don't know if it's able to trump out the uh, Zaku 2 quite yet. But anyway, definitely going to be looking cool when you have a set of them together. And just before anyone asks in the comments, because it seems like every time I do a review, someone asks me about the stand that I use. The stands that I'm using here in this case are from Kurabukiya. They're called a Flying, uh, flying Base R. If you want to check those out, you can buy it either on Amazon or HLJ or whatever you want to buy this. So just to preemptively sort of put that out there before someone asks in the comments. So here you can have a look at that uh, articulated arm on the back that is not actually really articulated, but that's kind of what it is meant to be anyway. There on the back holding the Zaku machine gun. You can use it to hold the bazookas as well, but I think that's it's going to be kind of difficult to get that kind of situated just with the backpack being there. The stuff is going to be kind of in the way. It's going to be quite a jam to try to get the bazooka on there. The Zaku machine gun I think is a little bit easier to get in there. So you can do some really cool posing options with that. Although, again, like with the other kits, like with the full armor Gundam, uh, the Zaku 2, the Psycho Zaku, those arms aren't really the most articulated, but the way they're molded, it does fit uh, to work pretty well. It would be nice if maybe they maybe had one more point of articulation, one or two more points of articulation in there to just give you a little bit more options. But just the way they are, um, they do, uh, you know, fit at least to a couple of poses that you'll be able to do with that. And that's kind of enough, really, I think. And then here you can see I also have the clamp toes open, as well as it's like flying onto something about to clamp onto something. I don't know, make up your own imagination as to what actually is going on with this pose. But anyway, so just wanted to show you guys some of those option parts here that we have uh, in store for this kit. One little point about the bazooka there, for holding the bazooka one, I'd recommend using this uh, straight angle wrist, not the bent angle wrist, because it has the magazine of the bazooka, the kind of the ammo there off to the side. If you use that bent angle wrist, that uh, me bent angle wrist that means that that uh, is going to make the back of the bazooka more towards the center of the of the zaku which means you'll have to either put it under the arm there's no way it's going to fit over the arm if you use that hand uh, so anyway and even then it doesn't really go under the arm just because of that uh, uh, magazine of ammunition so anyway if you want to use that bazooka in the hand use the straight wrist so that is just about going to wrap up this review, you guys. I gotta say, this is probably about the most badass you're ever gonna get out of a Zaku 1. So, you know, with the ability to do something like this, where you've got guns in each hand and then that arm helping you hold one more gun there from the backpack, I think is definitely pretty cool for a Zaku 1 here. Um, just really nice details. A lot of seam lines on this kit. Yeah, that's probably gonna be the biggest... Uh, the biggest thing that I can say as far as a negative point for this kit is that there are a lot of scenes you're going to have to work on. So that is going to take you a little bit of time to just get those wiped out. But otherwise, I think it's it's worth it because this is going to be a really nice kit when it's all said and done. Uh, keeping in these original cool color schemes is one thing. I mean, or you could switch it up, change it into some other different, a lot of really cool color schemes I think you could get out of this. Um, so I think that really works as well. I'm really interested to see, uh, I'm looking around online for some other different color schemes that people have done for this kit. I haven't really seen too many as of this point, but maybe I'll take a look over at Modeler's G or something. I'm sure there's some really cool customs that people have done so far. So that's about it, guys. If you do have any other questions or comments about this, leave those down below. I hopefully I didn't miss anything. I think I covered as much as I could there. Uh, and uh, yeah, so just thank you for watching. Thanks to Mind Phoenix Hobby Store for supplying me with this kit, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.